Election security experts are painting a grim picture of where the country stands less than 100 days before the general election. Newsy spoke to experts in areas where the largest vulnerabilities lie as the coronavirus pandemic poses new challenges. We started with mail-in voting, an option that many Americans may take out of safety concerns. We are in a uh, store for a lot of chaos and confusion on election day if we don't take quick action. The $4 billion that election advocacy groups have called for hasn't been allocated by Congress to states. They are making choices about whether or not they're going to provide um, postage for vote by mail ballots or whether or not they have the money to send mail ballot applications. We also have some states that are extraordinarily rigid in a way that has been found to be discriminatory about how they actually count the mail ballots that they've seen. Something else we may not have enough of, election workers who tend to be over the age of 60, an at-risk population for the coronavirus. We're going to need hundreds of thousands of new poll workers to volunteer and serve our democracy, not just on Election Day, but also for early voting and for processing of mail ballots. That's going to be a challenge. Polling sites themselves will be tested on November 3rd. The number of polling sites that are appropriate is much less than what we've seen in the past because we need sites that are large enough that can accommodate social distancing. And when it comes to the country's general election infrastructure, items like voting machines and databases with voter information. We really have just done the bare minimum and not really tackled the difficult uh, security issues that really need to be addressed in this country overall. We still have states that are uh, using very old machines that are outdated, machines that are running outdated software that don't have security updates. We also have machines that still don't produce a paper ballot. Cybersecurity experts say states and localities have taken significant steps since 2016, but they often fall short. This is really basic stuff, like making sure you've got all the security patches installed on your systems, making sure you have decent passwords, using two-factor authentication. And from an attacker's perspective, that's the low-hanging fruit. It might be that with all the publicity of Russia trying to tamper with our elections, other countries might want to get in on the game too. You know, why should Russia have all the fun? The last question Newsy asked of a disinformation expert, how prepared are we for an onslaught of falsities on social media? And there, a hint of progress. I think we are, as a society, better prepared in 2020 than we were in 2016. Part of that is the social media platforms. They're definitely trying to identify foreign operations and developing policies to um, dampen some of the more domestic operations as well. The efforts to manipulate us are going to be more sophisticated in 2020 than they were in 2016. But my hope is that we were so naive in 2016. Um, at the platforms were naive, individuals were naive, our government was naive. I think we um, are all collectively more sophisticated ourselves. Despite the enormous obstacles, states continue to prepare, some making strides and others hoping time will allot them some fixes. Sasha Ingber, Newsy, Washington.